Hello, my name is David Cash. I'm the executive editor of DAPT Magazine, and I am here with Jeff Carvalho. Uh, so the first question we have for you, uh, if it's all right, is Clubhouse in our mind is a perfect example of a decentralized uh, social media platform. So being such a popular voice on the app yourself, uh, how did that start for you? And uh, how do you see Clubhouse fitting in um, to your life? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's not exactly decentralized. It's pretty central in how people come together. I think it's much more, um, you know, they're trying to make it a platform that's a safe place for a variety of people, anyone to really get on and have a conversation. You know, I, I don't think it's perfect yet, but they're doing their best to get there. But I do agree with you. I think it's, 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 it's been, uh, it's been a platform. I think that's um, offered uh, many people who have not had a voice um, certainly underserved and, uh, you know, underserved communities um, have benefited from it in terms of just allowing people to come together. And I think that's one of the coolest things I got on the platform. Let me check. I think it was May. I think everyone, if you're on clubhouse can check on the bottom here. Uh, I joined May 21st. So I was invited by some friends, May 21st of, uh, 2020. I remember them saying it was sort of like this cool place where there was a lot of interesting people talking and they thought it would, you know, they knew that I came from radio and audio and I, I do a lot of speaking and it'd be a, a great place to kind of jump in. And when I first got on the platform, it was a super heavy uh, VC finance tech um, user base. And I think that's because, you know, when any new application jumps off, those are usually the first people to get on, you know, uh, especially people that are into in the future of tech, they always get on. And I found it really interesting because there wasn't that many people talking about culture. So after having been on a, you know, after having been on a few stages, and for those who are not familiar, you know, Clubhouse has a, a speaker stage and it has an audience stage and people can move in and out of the two, which makes it really cool and super simple and allows for people to interact with uh, speakers and really plays into that club, the club mentality that they're building. Um, I, I found it, and, and you know, George Floyd was really happening at that point. That was sort of the moment where a lot of it was coming together. And, and, and while I wasn't, you know, necessarily say trying to get people on to talk about it, there was a lot happening in the world of culture around it. And specifically in New York City, you know, with a lot of the protests that were happening, you saw, you know, Soho, Manhattan being boarded up. And there was um, uh, a lot of artists that were coming in and, and you know, really using those canvases, those you know, plywood walls. And I thought about people that I could have that conversation with. And I thought of Ruba Abunima, who's at Ruba on Instagram. You know, she's just an incredible creative mind. And um, a gentleman by the name of Gian Delion, who I think is one of the best writers in, 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 the, in culture, specifically in the world that we work in, um, to kind of get on board. And it happened that Ben Dietz, who was also a friend, uh, was already on board on platform. We all came together. And we we had this conversation, and you know, I I think for us that early audience was very small, and you know, there was less than five thousand, maybe ten thousand people on Clubhouse at that point. But what made it really cool was the quality of the audience, and it, and, and I'm not trying to suggest that there was a privilege on being on being in Clubhouse that early on, but more was that because it was invite only, and I think it is still invite only, it allowed you to kind of think about who would participate and who would, um, you know, um, give back in the community in a sense. I, I looked at people that could talk, people that were willing to have the conversation rather than people that would sit in an audience and just listen to what was going on. So that was always really important for me. And, and that's really how it started for me. And again, I, I think really quickly in May, I just understood that this was going to be massive and there's a lot of people out there that have a lot to say that don't necessarily like to be in front of a camera. And if you looked at the tools that existed prior to Clubhouse, you know, you had, you had Zoom and, uh, you know, there's there's YouTubing. But the majority of that stuff, with the exception of podcasting, is all, you know, front face forward. And what makes Clubhouse different than podcasting is that it's live, it allows for interaction, and it is not taped. So you're, you're, you're in the moment, which I think is really cool. And more importantly, the, the, the app allows you to understand who's in the audience and who you can bring up and invite up um, because bios are quite important. And I think I, I want to mention that because, you know, in most social apps, it's what you do in feed that's really important. Where I think in Clubhouse, what you put in your bio is what helps people understand what you do, who you are, and what you can participate, you know, how you're willing to participate.
Absolutely. I think the small, like the, the very few tools in Clubhouse are, you know, really used so well by the community because there are so few tools. So it's made us, you know, right. have to take advantage. Super of it. simple, right? Yeah. And um, the next question is also Clubhouse related. Um, personally, sure. I got into this space, um, at least initially, by listening to NFT conversations on Clubhouse um, a lot through NFT. Oh, sorry. When did you join Clubhouse? I joined it in February of this year. So All right, cool. a little bit later in the game, but still. All right. Still I, early. I, I still feel like there was still a huge shift from then to now. I really yeah, yeah. And I, and I get at least a taste of what you're talking about. I'm sure it was on a much smaller scale um, before, but it still was really cool uh, when I first sure. got in. And uh, the NFT conversation, you know, I still felt pretty early to the game. I actually minted my first NFT in 2019. So I had Ooh, congrats. before, thank you. Um, but, you know, it really started blowing up and I started hearing more about it, um, you know, in February and March of this year. And that's when I got into a couple of rooms where some really cool people, you know, like VPs and people from like Mark Jacobs, Louis Vuitton were just on this app talking about you know nfts and fashion and then it really started clicking for me and then i started getting into the nft rooms and both listening and learning and hearing about things like ipfs certificates and things that i had no idea about at the time and then also providing value in the ways that i was also researching the space um, and that was really exciting for me so i'm just wondering you know somebody that i've heard also talk about nfts on clubhouse um, as well as somebody who's so in the culture space i'm wondering um, have you gotten into the nft space on clubhouse or how would you define you know nfts and clubhouse for you at least in your experience i'd be curious I, I, for sure i on a topic like NFTs, if you actually are on Clubhouse, within a matter of a, a couple of days by going in and out of NFT rooms, and there's a tremendous number of rooms or right. clubs, as they say, right? So Clubhouse is all based around this club mentality. So you can you can join a club and they'll notify you when that club meets or when a room opens up. So I've actually had this conversation with people before where if you're new into NFTs or even into uh, uh, another... Um, you know, another energy that's happening at the moment, you can spend a couple hours on Clubhouse or a couple of days and actually get pretty educated on things because the majority of, you know, the, I don't want to say experts, but people that know what's going on are there having these conversations. And there's constantly people asking questions um, from the very basic to, you know, much more complex questions or, or you know, what, what pros would ask. Absolutely. And I did, you know, we have as well. And I'm a huge collector. I collect, I've been collecting everything from punk rock fanzines to, uh, you know, to sneakers to, um, I guess I wear my sneakers more than anything, but you know, I'm just a big fan of collecting and ephemera. I have all my concert tickets. So, so it makes sense for you. Right? Sorry? It makes sense for you then, the whole concept. Yeah, I'm a super nerd. Like I, I love, <laughs> you know, for me, what's exciting about culture is getting deep, deep into something rather than staying on the surface. And with NFTs, it was, you know, I think we almost fell into it a little bit. We hosted um, on our show Culture Club a room with uh, Beeple and Christie's when he first launched his NFT and really had no idea um, just where that thing would go. And, you know, I think what makes Culture Club very cool and specifically Annex, which is where we do a lot of the NFT conversation, Annex is sort of like a sub show off of Culture Club, is, you know, What's, what's, what's important for us is was bringing on an audience and educating them very much on the same lines as we were educating ourselves around the same time, right? So we'd bring on experts that we would be asking questions that we're pretty sure our audience wanted to know. And it's been, you know, really amazing. You know, I've, there's a lot of, uh, as they call NFT whales on, on Clubhouse. You can really move the needle on an NFT on Clubhouse, surprisingly, and it's it's become one of those platforms. I think Discord is also a huge play and to some extent Twitch and Twitter, of course, but Clubhouse is where there's quite conversation. And on any given day, there is either an opening or closing party for somebody that's launching an NFT, which I think is super cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, my, my education on the world of NFTs, less so in the world of tokens and crypto, but definitely within what's happening in NFTs, it's, it's, it's happened there. And, and it continues to happen there. And I think we're, we have a lot of fun is actually hosting these opening and closing parties because you can actually watch in real time, you know, how these things transact, which is cool. That's awesome. And yeah, you get some really historic moments like in real time. And, I'll, and I feel like sometimes you'll even, I'll even hop into a room and I won't even realize the the gravitas of the situation that's sure holding in front of me. And I'm like, oh, wow, somebody just, you know, top of the record, right? And I was right there. Oh, right. wow. You know, you, you weren't able to do that before. So. I and again, I can't, you can't under, you can't understate how, amazing it is to be able to talk to not only creators of these digital assets and these digital works and how you can interact with them on clubhouse and have that conversation and again it happens in real time 
directly. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so one of the conversations I've been having on Clubhouse recently, um, at least in my certain you know circumstances around NFTs and publishing, and obviously you know you've been in the publishing space for a really long time. So based on your 13 plus years at High Snobiety, you know building such a multimedia empire, um, how do you see NFTs affecting the future of publishing, uh, digital or otherwise, um, in your opinion? I, I think. I actually look at it a little deeper than that. I think that tokens in general are going to really change how um, uh, how publishers interact. And you know, at, at a very simple in a very simple example, you know, we're about to come out of a world. We're about to come out of the world where we've been sort of stuck in our homes and in our offices and wherever we are. And now everything's opening up again. Um, and in the future world, and, you know, and if you go to an event today, usually you get to an event, you hold a ticket or you hold, you're on a guest list, right? With what you can do with tokens these days, especially around gating, you know, um, you can actually use wallets to allow for people to enter into events. So, you know, FWB, which is friends with benefits, is one of the really interesting social tokens out there it has a very large community behind it. You know, they're at Bitcoin week in Miami this week. And I was just looking at the newsletter and, you know, their big event, um, uh, which I think is uh, Wednesday or Thursday, you can only enter the event if you hold 60 FWB in a wallet, you know? So I think we're going to, we're really starting to show real world examples of where, you know, uh, a, a digital wallet and what's inside of that wallet really plays into what's happening in real life. A lot of people, especially if you look at social currencies and social tokens, we're very unsure as to what you would get from it but it's very clear that it can it can lend itself very well to a, a membership model so for me it's not so much about what nfts are going to do with fashion because i think eventually we are going to be in a place where wearables are going to be you know incredibly important you'll be able to either own or purchase a wearable when you buy an actual physical good um and that, you know my, my my belief is that you'll be able to apply that to a, a variety of different worlds or lands within the metaverse and within gaming um, but it's not necessarily just about NFTs. It's, it's, it's about how you're able to begin to partake in communities, especially within fashion by holding something. And today that something is, is tokens in a specific coin or it's holding an NFT, but I, we're only really touching the surface. We have no idea where this is going to go. And honestly, I think it's, you know, we're in June 1st today and you know, I think that the current run has been happening since about, you know, January or February. And uh, I really think that by the, the end of this year, we're going to really start seeing innovation and, in, you know, how people accept it. And certainly brands are all trying to figure out how to get involved. Right now. Yeah, no, I totally right agree. Now. And I right. think I think the thing you're touching on, which is the access point of this, of, of specifically like the smart contract technology behind this, because, you know, every token is different. Um, but, you know, the fact that they can provide access or they can, you know, fulfill some sort of code that allows you to enter something like literally like you can scan some things and they let you in it's amazing and, and this didn't exist you, you nailed it i'm on a new, i'm on a newsletter today that required you to have token in in a wallet and it uses a, a wallet connect to allow you to read the newsletter you know so it, it it's becoming the new gate it's becoming the new um i wouldn't want to say password but it's definitely becoming the new access point as you say it's not your followers on social media anymore now it's here you gotta you gotta buy in somehow Maybe it's still that's also going to be that's also going to be changing for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm going to start wrapping it up because I do want I don't want to take up too too much more of your time. But you know, thinking about these things of um, these these elements of access and these elements of you know adding tokens to your projects, um, maybe with High Snobody in mind, but maybe just with digital publishing in mind in general. What's exciting you at the moment? What do you think is going to happen next? Maybe at the end of this year or next year um, within the publishing world specifically, uh, since you're so intertwined in this space. Yeah, it, as it relates to what's happening in um, the world of crypto and tokens, crypto, or you know, it could be metaverses or AR or VR. Any anything you want to touch on? All, your... all of it's like on the table. You know, it, uh, again, I'm 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 very new myself to a lot of this stuff. But if you look at what's happening within Decentraland, if you look at uh, Sandbox, which which hasn't launched yet, you know, there's a there's a few different I love know, worlds that are coming out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this Decentraland, I think it's a, it's, it's an incredible um, CPU hog, right? So it doesn't run on your phone yet. You need to be on a desktop and that's going to have to be fixed eventually. But I think if you, you know, I had um, Bobby Hundreds who started the Hundreds line was on a, a podcast with me once and he 
excuse me, not on a podcast, on a clubhouse. Sorry. I'm, confused. I'm almost confusing the two. And, you know, he talked about, you know, this past holiday, how, you know, he went out, he went out and bought his kids, like, you know, the, the, the best toys, the best things, the best tech. And at the end of the day, all they wanted was like, you know, tokens in their Fortnite game, you know, and I look at my six-year-old son who plays Minecraft and Roblox and, you know, he just started playing a new Marvel game. I had to buy crystals for him. All they want is these, you know, these digital, these digital yeah. <laughs> coins in order to be able to buy up within those worlds. And I think that for sure is how a generation is looking at things. That doesn't mean that you or I and, and, and a younger generation would stop wearing clothing, but there is now this interconnection to something else. And um, we're going to hundred percent see more and more brands figure out how to enter that space. And maybe, maybe it's on, you know, maybe it's, um, uh, it, it's in the wearable space, but I think that more and more you're going to see this idea of access through membership via some sort of token system um, really beginning to play out. But to get there requires a lot more people to understand and start using digital wallets. You know, the, the MetaMask or Bitsky wallets of the world. Those are two of like a thousand examples of wallets out there. And I think we're going to see a lot of innovation in how people look at the wallet, how people use the wallet, how they store it. You know, today it's on your phone, or at least it's on my phone. And that's going to, you know, that's going to become, that's going to become a place where you turn to often. You know, I, I use like a, a, a .eth e uh, domain, which currently works with uh, a few browsers um, and a lot of wallets so that, you know, I don't need to remember this long string uh, public key for my wallet. You know, it, it, we're all we're getting to a place now where more and more of us won't even have a conversation as to what a wallet is. In the same way that we, you know, we had a conversation as to what a smartphone is. Or, and I think the big innovation is, and again, I think we're at the very early stages. And you know, you minted your first NFT in twenty nineteen. I think I bought my first crypto in like twenty seventeen. Like we're still super early on this. And, you know, it's, it's what ha what's going to happen on blockchain without getting too deep into it is going to really advance what we do in the real world. We just don't know how it's going to happen yet. So um, I'm excited to see where it goes. Me too. And I think we're still just scratching the surface. I'm sure you know. Totally. I'll, share, I'll share one tiny thing with you that I'm working sure. at the moment. Um, one thing that we're talking about in a couple of projects that I'm doing is kind of try, trying to start treating wallets uh, like the early, early days of email marketing, like doing airdrops to people's wallets as a, as a totally. like, like, love airdrops. driver marketing. So we're trying to integrate that into a few projects. So really, really excited about that. And uh, also one of the people we're partnering with this, because uh, completely on, on board with what you're saying, uh, is the fabricants. So, you know, with somebody like that, you know, you could see with the stuff that they're already producing, uh, a Zoom call or something like this, why people would want to from home wear, I don't know, a really cool hoodie that they don't have to put on. They just press a button and boom, they're in the newest Givenchy hoodie. So that's, that's yeah. exciting that we're about to say. Again, only, you nailed it. We're only touching the surface and much more to go. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I know, I know you have a million things going on and you're working from home, so you're with your daughter and I know- that That's all right, that's all right. I appreciate you uh, having me on. No, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Cool. And uh, yeah, again, take care. Really much appreciate you taking the time.